Regular viewers of this channel may remember that shortly after getting my new Firefly Q6 camera and posting up a review, I managed to disarm my quad inverted at some altitude and fall all the way to the floor. Which by the way, Beta Flight did fix the behaviour of, but I do take the point about it's a better idea to use switch arming for doing this sort of thing, so I have moved to that. Anyway, the camera took the impact of this crash and the Q6's OLED screen was smashed killing for me the nicest feature it had. I'd exchanged some emails before with Victor at Hawkeye who make the camera uh, about the firmware suggestion I had and he told me that they were going to be selling replacement parts for the Q6 through Banggood and Gearbest. Gearbest got stock first so I ordered one immediately. So the idea of this video was to show how to swap out the OLED screen which I imagined would be pretty straightforward and to a point it is. Here's the replacement screen, which is shipped in a nice little case so it won't get damaged. And opening up the camera is easy. Just two screws and the rest of it pretty much pops out. It was when I got to the screen itself, which I had assumed the ribbon cable would pull out of a connector, that I was in for a shock. It soldered in, which means any replacement would also have to be soldered in. And it's tiny. So this is where the video becomes less of a how-to and more of a few snapshots of me uh, in mid sort of wondering how on earth I was going to manage this. To be clear, I'm really no expert with a soldering iron. Joining cables, getting pinhead is soldered in, that's all okay. But really small and delicate stuff I don't really know how to do. I'm sure there's some techniques and possibly tools or materials you can use, but the best idea I had was bodge it as best I could. So this certainly isn't the right way of doing things, but it's the only way I could think of given what I had on hand. What I did was basically rip the existing ribbon cable away, making sure I left the tips where the soldering is on all in place. I then lined up the new cable over the top of um, the end of the old one uh, and temporarily fixed this in place with a piece of captain tape. I then placed my hot iron on each of the contacts on the new cable with the intention of drawing the existing solder from the old cable up and creating a bridge contact um, between the old and the new. The first attempt looked okay, but it was really too small to see in any detail. Uh, the screen didn't power up, so what I did is use my little USB microscope, and there's a review floating around that I did for that somewhere, and I could see that some of the contacts, the solder hadn't flowed all the way over. So I read the D's and rechecked and kept doing that. And on my fourth attempt, success. I have to be honest and say this was way more luck than skill, but I'm not fussy. And if it works, it works. What I did check first is that the camera would still operate with no screen at all, which it will. So I knew if I really screwed up and burnt out some tracks or something here, well, I hadn't made the camera any worse. So it was worth a go in my opinion. So I present this to you to show you that, yes, you can fix it, but it's not for the faint-hearted. Basically, try not to smash it up in the first place. What Victor also told me is that they took on the comments about my request to be able to turn off the OSD when using this as a live FPV camera and put it in firmware update 2.3. So I thought I'd check that out and show just how easy it is to update the firmware on this. This is the website you go to for updates. And I, I'll be the first to say that the text on these pages isn't very clear. It doesn't describe really what the updates are and the HTML seems all over the place and a bit jumbled up. Uh, the main thing to take away from it is that the important link is here um, and I'll include this in the description which is to the actual firmware itself. After you download it you'll need to wipe everything off your memory card and then place just the firmware file you downloaded onto it. So here's my Firefly with the newly replaced OLED and as you can see, eventually, it's on firmware 2.2. So all we need to do is power it off, stick in the SD card and power it back on and it will update. You get a nice load of flashes of the LEDs to tell you it's doing something, which gives you a nice feeling. But what I wouldn't give for a process bar on the OLED screen to give you 100% confidence that it hasn't gone wrong. Um, one thing to remember is after you've done the firmware update, you need to delete 
that file that's left or just format it basically from the um, the menu because if you turn it on off and turn it back on again it will start doing the firmware upgrade again even though it's already on that firmware so here we are on 2.3 and look there's an extra OSD menu so let's plug in the live out cable on the TV and test it well I've uh, plugged this in with the cable pointed the camera at the TV so let's turn this on and see what we get Okay, so you see we've got um, the voltage being supplied, less than 6 volts, and we've got the effect of the camera up there. And if we oops, click on record, no, that's the mode. If we click on record, then we get the big flashing one in the side there. So let's stop that. And I'm vaguely focused. Turn the OSD off. Can't look out of that. And let's press record. So camera is now recording. Check it out. No flashing lights on the OSD. Just my hand there on the screen. <laughs>